Hey everyone, this is Manner of Death. This week's Manner of Death is Homicide and Undetermined. Noreen Boyd Noreen K. McDonald Boyd was a 29-year-old woman, mother of three, living in Rupert, Idaho. The year was 1988 and it was December 21st, just days before Christmas when she would go missing. Noreen lived and helped manage brick apartments at 9th and A Street in the town of Rupert. It was here in her apartment that she went missing. She had called her father that day, sounding upset. She had just two weeks prior been charged by the police for stealing over $900 from a local man. When her father went to her apartment shortly after their call had ended, he found her door open with Christmas music playing in the background and presents for her children on the table. Gift wrapping supplies were still there, but Noreen was gone. She would be missing for three months when in March of 1989, her gray sedan would be found by some hikers at the city of Rocks. Near her car, Noreen's belt was found, along with some cigarettes, empty beer cans, an empty sleeping pill bottle, as well as some illicit drugs that were inside the car. A pair of aviator sunglasses were found as well, but Noreen's family stated that they did not belong to her. Since her car was found in that area, the police held a two-day search for Noreen, but were unsuccessful. Her case then grew cold, it was 24 years later that her remains were discovered in the City of Rocks National Reserve. Apparently, investigators were pursuing a lead in the area when a cadaver dog hit on a spot. It was there they found Noreen's body. Even though Noreen was finally recovered, questions still remain unanswered. What happened to her? What made her go out to the City of Rocks? Was she alone or did she go with someone unwillingly? Because of this, her case still remains cold. If you have any information on what could have happened to Noreen, please contact the Casilla County Sheriff's Office. Susan Hansen Susan Hansen was a 16-year-old high schooler living in Blackfoot, Idaho, with their family in 1964. On October 29th, Susan went on a trip to Dan's Mighty Market, the local grocery store, to pick up some food for her family, but she never made it back alive. Her family noticed she had been gone for a long time, and a search commenced with several law enforcement agencies searching for her. Three hours after the start of the search, the family car was found. It was parked near Main Street, which was three blocks away from the family residence, located on South Meridian. At the scene, groceries were found spread around. 65 extra miles were on the car, along with some soil samples traced back to the Snake River, near Firth, Idaho. The reason they knew of the 65 additional miles was because the car had been serviced earlier that day. The tailpipe had been broken off and a matching one was found five to six miles from the Fort Hall town site. From there, the search started focusing on the reservation. A goose hunter noticed the Hansen car speeding along the road with something dragging behind it causing sparks. The goose hunter had gotten stuck near the reservation's cable bridge close to the Snake River. Another reason the Fort Hall reservation became a focus point was when Susan's body was found after her disappearance, floating in the Spring Creek on the Fort Hall Reservation, about 12 miles north of Pocatello. She had blunt force trauma to her head. Of the evidence gathered from the Hanson car, a fingerprint was lifted from the rearview mirror, which could not be matched during the initial investigation. It was in 1990, with the help of the AFIS, or AFIS system, that the fingerprint was matched to John Hevewa, Jr., a Fort Hall resident. He would have been 19 at the time of Susan's murder. He was charged with first-degree murder, but his case was dismissed in 1991 after witnesses came forward and the prosecutor felt there was not enough evidence to convict John Hevewa. To this day, Susan's case remains unsolved. If you have any information that could help solve her case, please contact the Blackfoot Police Department or Idaho Cold Case Tip Line. Sue Cha Kim Su Cha Kim was a 54-year-old woman living in Twin Falls, Idaho. She owned a business called Lee's Oriental Massage at 1037 Blue Lakes Boulevard, which strangely enough is now the location of other massage parlors. She also lived in an apartment inside of her business. On May 21, 1997, an unidentified witness noticed that the door to her business had been left open. Thinking it was suspicious, they called the police. When the police entered, they found Su Cha Kim dead. She had been murdered in her home and place of business.
While her case was being investigated, charges appeared on her credit card. An unknown man was using Su Cha Kim's card in Boise and later in Ontario. It was also used at another massage parlor in Garden City, Idaho. A fuzzy picture of him was captured from the convenience store security camera where he used the card. There was a police sketch released of him. But even with these clues, Su Cha Kim's case remains cold. If you have any information of who this man could be, or that could help solve Su Cha Kim's case, please contact the Twin Falls Police Department or submit a tip through the Idaho Cold Case Tip Line at 1-844-TIP-4040. Vonnie Taysom Vonnie Suzanne Taysom was born on August 10, 1953 in Blackfoot, Idaho. She was 13 years old when on December 30, 1966, her life would be cut short. It was Christmas break and she had just come home from a luncheon with her mother. It was around 12.30 when they returned to the house located on South Park Avenue in Shelley, Idaho. A few hours later, Mr. and Mrs. Jim Rolfe, some relatives of the Taysoms who lived next door, went into the home to use the laundry room where they discovered Vonnie, who had been stabbed to death in the family basement. She had been stabbed in the chest with an instrument over six inches long, according to the autopsy. She was also found nude, lying on a Davenport. However, a pathologist declared that she had not been sexually assaulted. There were limited clues, but among those were some barefoot footprints in the snow outside, fingerprints in the room, and some tobacco shreds found near a chair. None in the household smoked, which made this an obvious clue that could have been linked to her killer. Unfortunately, no headway has been made on Vani's case. If you have any information that could help solve her case, please contact the Shelley Police Department or you can contact the Idaho Cold Case Tip Line at 1-844-TIP-4040. Todd Hofflander Todd Hofflander was a 39-year-old man who went missing in the Windy Saddle area of Idaho County on September 27, 2010. He and another friend were hiking when they separated to take different pathways through Hell's Canyon near the Snake River. He wouldn't be seen for 10 years before his remains were found in April of 2020. Todd was initially in that area with some friends to help scout for mule deer. The hike was supposed to last four days, and on the fourth day, September 27th, the group split up. Todd was last spotted at McGaffey Cow Camp. The area had really tough terrain, but he knew the land really well and even took his black lab retriever with him. Todd also took a pistol with him, a lighter, beans and rice, chicken, water, and a sleeping bag. He was seemingly prepared, although he carried no radio or cell phone with him. On September 28, 2010, when Todd didn't show up at the meeting spot, his friends called the authorities and a search party was started. A helicopter commenced a grid search and dog teams were also brought out. A few days later, after no results, his dog was found on the opposite side of the mountain range where Todd was last seen. They tried to get the dog to lead them to Todd, but did not have any luck. The area was searched, but he was not found. For the next 10 years, Todd's disappearance remained a mystery. It was on April 26, 2020, when the Idaho County Sheriff's Office received a call that a hunter had found a human skull north of Bernard Creek. Other items were also recovered from the area. Those items were identified to be Todd's. They were identified by his wife. The remains were sent off for DNA testing to confirm that they did belong to Todd. In January of 2020, they were positively identified to him. What happened to Todd Hofflander? The cause of his death and manner of death have remained undetermined to this day. If you have any information that could help explain what happened to him, please contact the Idaho County Sheriff's Office, or you can use the Idaho Cold Case Tip Line. Hey everyone, thank you so much for sticking around and watching till the end of the video. I really appreciate all the support you've given me recently and throughout this whole time that I've been on YouTube. Thank you so much for everything and I'll see you in the next one.